Okay, so to continue our uh, acid-base equilibrium notes, uh, the formatting on this is horrible. I apologize for that. But this little bidirectional arrow belongs here and here. And this whole column belongs under the hydronium ion and this whole column belongs under the conjugate base. So I apologize if that confuses you. I'll try to kind of talk through this as we go through it um, and hopefully it'll make more sense. So anytime that you're dealing with a weak acid, if you want to know what are the equilibrium concentrations of that acid of the acid still together, the hydronium ion, and the conjugate base, you have to use what's called, you don't have to use a rice table, but it makes it a lot easier to calculate everything using a rice table. So what is a rice table? Well, the R stands for the reaction. The I stands for the initial concentrations. And most of the time, if you're just dealing with a weak acid, your initial concentration of the acid still put together is going to be whatever we, you know, whatever the question tells us. And we won't have yet any of the hydronium or hydrogen ions, and we won't have any conjugate base. So those will both be zero. And then the change, that's what the C stands for. Uh, the acid's concentration is going to go down by some value. We don't know what it is. We'll just call it X. And the ions concentrations are going to go up by that same value. And the reason that it's the same value is because all of these guys have a 1 to 1 mole ratio. If either, you know, any of these guys had a coefficient of something other than 1, well, then that coefficient would also follow down with the change, whatever the change would be. And so now the E stands for equilibrium, and that's the concentrations once the weak acid has reached its equilibrium point. And so that's going to be I, the initial minus X, and then these guys are both going to be 0 plus X, 0 plus X, or just X. And so when you plug that into the equilibrium expression, which for a weak acid, Ka is going to be equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion times the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid. And these are all equilibrium concentrations. And so what Ka turns into, once we plug in these values down here, is we have Ka equals the hydrogen ion concentration. I'm going to change colors again. The hydrogen ion concentration is X, so we have X. The conjugate base concentration is also X, so we actually just have X times X, or X squared, divided by the concentration of the acid, which is I minus X. And then you can solve for X. And you might be looking at this, and those of y'all that are in college can definitely look at this and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Solving for x on this is going to require the use of the quadratic equation formula. That whole, you know, x or y equals 4ac minus the square root of, you know, whatever. I don't even remember that equation. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Getting all my notifications popping up here. My bad. Uh, but so the nice thing that we can do, this x value right here is typically, for a weak acid, it's going to be very small. And let's just say that our starting concentration of our weak acid was 0.1. Well, as long as the Ka for the acid is less than a something times 10 to the negative 3, then that means this minus whatever this x ends up being, let's just say it's, you know, 0.00. .00 2, 2 times 10 negative 3, well, you're going to end up with 0.998, which, if we're still working in 1 or even 2 sig figs, is still going to be equal to 0.1. And I'm sorry, 0 0.098, my bad. Uh, is, and so because of that, we can assume that this x is actually not going to change i that much. And so because of that, we just ignore it. 
And then the Ka for a weak acid ends up being reduced to just x squared over the initial concentration. So that just kind of helps simplify things and prevents us from having to use that quadratic equation thing. Now, here is an example. What is the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of acetic acid? And then I gave you the formula for acetic acid. You probably should just go ahead and know that. Uh, but so first, we're going to set up our rice table. And the first thing is the reaction. So the ionization of acetic acid. So we have CH3, which will partly ionize into the hydrogen ion and the acetate ion, which is acetic, acid, acetic acid's conjugate base. And so our initial concentration comes from the question. So the initial concentration of acetic acid is going to be 0.20. The initial concentration of hydrogen is just zero, and acetate is just zero. So at this point, we'll have our change. Ac acetic acid is going to go down by some value. Uh, the hydrogen ion is going to go up by that same value, and so is the acetate ion. And so our equilibrium is going to be 0 0.20 minus x. Our hydrogen is just going to be x, and our acetate is just going to be x. Now, you might not have this memorized yet. You probably will by use, uh, not because you purposely set out to memorize the Ka of acetic acid, but the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And on the last slide I told you, right up here I said that as long as the Ka for the weak acid is less than 10 to the negative 3, then we get to assume that this x right here is not enough to actually change the starting value of our concentration that much, and so we just get to ignore it. Now some of y'all might be having a hard time with that. Oh my gosh, why can you ignore it here but not here. And this is where I use the millionaire versus the homeless person analogy. Our millionaire has got lots of money. Now I know you're looking at that going, uh, that's like 20 cents. That's not lots of money. Just go with this here. Let's say our millionaire's got a million dollars. And you go up to him and you say, hey, can I have a dollar? And the millionaire's going to go, uh, okay, sure. You know, I'm not even going to notice that dollar's missing. So great, go ahead. I now have 199 $999,999. I'm good. Now, the homeless person, you go up to him and you go, hey, can I have a dollar? And the homeless person goes, well, I don't have a dollar to give, so I can't give you a dollar. And you go, well, here, I'll give you a dollar. And the homeless person's very excited because now they did have nothing, and now they have a dollar. And so the homeless person is going to notice that change a lot more than your millionaire is going to notice that change. And so that's why we can ignore it here, but not here. So now moving on, we know that our Ka is going to be equal to the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of the conjugate base, in this case the acetate ion, divided by the concentration of the acetic acid. And so our hydrogen ion concentration is x. Our acetate concentration is also x, so this becomes x squared, divided by the concentration of the acetate, which is 0.2. And this whole thing is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So now solving for uh, x, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this stuff so that we can actually see, well, no, I really don't want to erase. So let me just pick another color. So solving for x, we get that x squared equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0.2. So that's going to be, I don't have my calculator out and ready, I apologize. 1.8 times 0.2, and so we end up with 3.6, and I'm going to run out of room, times 10 to the negative 6. <laughs> I'm trying to squeeze this in here. Uh, and so to solve for x, we take the square root of both sides, and you get 6 times 10 to the negative third, I believe.
Oh, whoa, no, maybe not. Hang on, I'm gonna double check that. That doesn't seem right. 3.6 times 10 to the negative six. Yeah, okay. So we get x equals point zero zero. See, we're doing two sig figs here, so that's gonna be one nine. And uh, so what's the pH of? Well, this x is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And to find the pH of something, pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So in this case, it's going to be equal to the negative log of 0 0.0019, and that's going to be equal to uh, 2.72. Now, a couple of y'all might be going, hey, wait a minute, that's three sig figs, and you're only allowed two sig figs. Well, funny thing happens when you're dealing with pHs. Uh, we can write this as a scientific notation. So instead of the negative log of 0 0.0019, I'm going to do the negative log of 1.9 times 10 to the negative third. And when you are dealing with finding the pH, there are actually three sig figs in this value right here. The first one, I'm gonna really color code this thing. This two actually comes from this part of our scientific notation. That's the estimate that you can, or that's the number that you can estimate. And then these two values, the seven, and the two, they actually came from right here. So when you're doing your sig figs on pHs, if you have a, you know two sig figs times 10 to the negative whatever, that's actually going to give you three sig figs when you go to find your pH. So you actually get to gain a, a sig fig there, which is always fun. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to call this one done and make a part five, apparently.